infamous Turn 1 at Road Atlanta, and a pack of vintage race cars shuffles for position. These are the Atlanta Historic Races, an event being held for the seventh consecutive year, and once again has drawn a first-class assortment of vintage race cars, which, if not for the men who own them, drive them and love them, might be moldering away in the dark corner of a garage or quietly occupying a static exhibit in a museum. Vintage racing has become a thriving industry, as opposed to the infrequent vintage exhibitions which were scattered randomly across the racing map in past years. The values of documented vintage race cars have been sent skyward by the increasing interest in them and in the slowly dwindling numbers of original historic racers still in existence which made the appearance of one vintage race team at Atlanta so noteworthy. Brumos Racing is an organization of vintage Porsche lovers who have assembled a collection of several of the most famous and successful racing Porsches ever campaigned. As everyone knows, Porsche has long enjoyed worldwide acclaim in the arenas of motorsports on every level. And here at the Atlanta Historic Races, there were plenty of Porsches from production to prototype. Brumos Racing President Bob Snodgrass from Jacksonville, Florida is an accomplished vintage race driver and has scored numerous vintage racing victories behind the wheel of his orange number 59 1971 Porsche 914 6GT. Even after 20 years of racing, it still looks and sounds as potent as it did two decades ago. And this Porsche is a car with quite a history behind it. In 1971, it won the very first International Motorsports Association, or IMSA, GT Championship, driven by the late Peter Gregg and co-driven by one of IMSA's most durable champions, Hurley Haywood, who joined Brumos in Atlanta to put in some hot laps in some of the Porsches on hand. Hurley has won such endurance races as the 12 Hours of Sebring, the 24 Hours of Daytona, and the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Although a longtime Porsche driver, he perhaps gained his greatest notoriety in the mid-80s when he drove the beautiful Jaguar GT prototypes for Group 44 racing. But today, he'll be getting some quality time behind the wheel of a couple of thoroughly ferocious Porsches. First, one of the most feared race cars ever to turn a wheel in road racing, the notorious Porsche 935. Its flat-six twin-turbo engine spooled together 700 horsepower. Peter Gregg won his sixth and last IMSA GT championship with this car in 1979. And while Nissan pilot Jeff Brabham is the talk of IMSA with his outstanding record of scoring 26 pole positions, he is still 11 behind the all-time record of Gregg and the 935 with 37. And although there were truly incredible race cars streaking around the 12-turn, 2.52-mile road Atlanta course, cars ranging from Trans Am Camaros and Mustangs to even a former Bill Elliott Winston Cup Thunderbird, few cars got the reaction the 935 did. While Bob Snodgrass and fellow Brumos driver Andy Racka enjoyed jockeying the two 914 sixes they brought along, Hurley Haywood now prepares to reacquaint himself with a car of majestic power and unimpeachable credentials. Built to compete in the early 1970s against the powerhouse McLarens in the legendary Can-Am series, this is the 1400 horsepower V12 Porsche 91710. It's considered by many to be the fastest road racing car of all time. Haywood drove that car during the two years that Porsche campaigned it and it obliterated track records worldwide. Peter Gregg drove it to third place in the 1973 Can-Am points race, after which it was sold. In 1991, Brumos bought the car from that owner, and now Hurley Haywood is putting the hammer down on this most powerful of all Porsches. While men like Bob Snodgrass are businessmen who vintage race as a hobby, men like Hurley Haywood are professionals, men who are used to getting paid large sums of money for their services. So why has he come to Atlanta to drive with Brumos Racing? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One, the two guys that, that own all these cars are, are two good friends of mine. And we're starting to build a Brumos collection of, of cars that have been important to Brumos over the years. We have, we just 
got my 917 back, which I ran in uh, 73 in the Can-Am season. And uh, we've got the first 914-6 that, that I won the IMSA championship with, and we've got Peter's last uh, IMSA championship car. So, you know, to be able to drive these cars, for me, is a, is a privilege. And part of the whole mystique of Brumos has been was made back in the early 70s and uh, with Peter and myself driving and it's nice for me to be able to get back into these cars and show them off to the fans because the fans I think enjoy seeing these cars, they enjoy seeing the, the Brumos colors back on cars that have been uh, of ra have racing history and importance behind them. It is indeed refreshing to hear a professional athlete speak of history, tradition and sentiment during a time in our history when money is seemingly tossed about by those who have it to the self-interested profiteers who are eager to get it. If nothing else, vintage racing proves that the sheer love of competition and an appreciation for the accomplishments of those who have come before us is payment enough for those who pursue this sport. And the Porsches of Brumos Racing prove that true greatness is a quality that never goes out of style.